take a moment to look closely at what you're wearing. No, a closer look. On average, a single t-shirt contains more than 1,000 individual stitches. Multiply that across the average American wardrobe, which contains around 100 items, and you're looking at more than 130,000 total stitches. Now imagine having to sew each stitch by hand. If you weren't already grateful for the sensational speed of the sewing machine, you might be now. So how does a sewing machine work? First, it might help to think about how we sew by hand. The easiest stitch to learn is the running stitch. That's the stitch you've probably used to mend your favorite blouse. You stab a threaded needle into the fabric, run it over, and pull it back through the material. If you're wondering how in the world you could get a machine to replicate that motion, you would have been in good company during the early part of the 19th century. Those early days of prototyping machines that could sew like seamstresses read like a comedy of errors. Take German inventor Balthasar Krems, whose patentless cap sewing contraption, by all accounts, never actually worked. Or Austrian tailor Josef Mattersperger. Mattersperger succeeded in earning a patent for his take on a sewing machine. Unfortunately, the patent expired before he could commercialize it, and when he finally created a new and improved machine, he ran out of money. And then there was French tailor Barthélemy Thimonnier, who actually neared something resembling success, only to narrowly escape death when a mob of French tailors burned down his garment factory for fear of being put out of work. And you worried machines were coming for your job. It wouldn't be until 1845 that the modern sewing machine would start to take shape. It was then that American inventor Elias Howe made a breakthrough. Instead of trying to recreate the sewing motion of a human hand working with a single source of thread, he designed a process that used two sources of thread. Unfortunately, Howe struggled to spark interest in his machine, and imitators began to take liberties with Howe's design. The most successful innovation was the use of an up and down sewing motion instead of Howe's side to side variation. The man credited for that advancement was none other than Isaac Singer, founder of the successful manufacturer of sewing machines, the Singer Company. So now what was the secret to Singer's lasting success? The modern sewing machine features three key components a needle mechanism providing one source of thread, a bobbin and shuttle mechanism providing a second source of thread, and a mechanism that keeps fabric moving under the needle. A threaded needle pushes through the fabric, pulling a single upper thread along with it. Unlike the eye of handheld needles, the eye of sewing machine needles is located near the tip. That allows the needle to push the thread in and out of the fabric without having to go through itself. As the needle rises, the thread folds into a tiny loop. That loop is caught by a shuttle hook, which carries it full circle until it catches on a second lower thread streaming from the bobbin. Together, the upper and lower threads form a knot that tightens as the needle completes its upstroke. Just before the cycle begins again, a set of metal bars known as feed dogs nudge the fabric forward. A foot pedal gives users control of the sewing speed, much like the gas pedal on a car. When synchronized just right, these mechanisms can produce more than 1,000 stitches a minute. Although the sewing mechanism has remained more or less the same over the past century and a half, sewing machines have gotten a lot smarter. Making adjustments between sewing sessions used to be more art than science. Today's computerized sewing machines can save sewing data to faithfully reproduce any design. Some can even be uploaded with custom patterns for sewing or embroidery. It's a bit like 3D printing for textiles. But lest history repeat itself, don't expect the machines to take over just yet. Many designers and clothing companies find that there is still no substitute for human touch. The complexity of modern garments is simply too much for today's sewing machines, even ones integrated with robotics, to handle all on their own. So next time you find yourself peeking in the closet or in the mirror, take a moment to appreciate both the human and machine power that keeps you looking effortlessly fashionable.